Welcome to the Scoop School Podcast, where we tackle your conundrums about the retail ice cream and frozen dessert business. And now, here's your host, he plays the drums with real ice cream drumsticks, the ice cream bloke and self-appointed headmaster of Scoop School, Steve Christensen. G'day ice cream lovers, my name's Steve Christensen. Again, thanks for joining us on this episode of the podcast. Uh, We're going to talk a little bit about mixed bags today, how to hold them, how to handle them. Uh, Before we do so, I do want to thank our episode sponsor, which is Dippin' Flavors. Love the boys at Dippin' Flavors, D-I-P-P-I-N. Jim Starts, Ryan, Class, and all the crew down there have a great knowledge about flavoring ice cream and frozen dessert. Anything that goes into ice cream to flavor it to make that beautiful base, anything that goes on top to uh, particulate it or to top it, you want to go to dippinflavors.com, D-I-P-P-I-N, dippinflavors.com. Thank you, Jim, for your sponsorship of this episode of the podcast. Now, I want to talk to you about mixed bags today. So more than likely, if you are in the frozen custard business, if you're in the premium ice cream business, if you're in the soft serve business, you will get from your supplier a bag that looks like this. This is a two and a half gallon bag. This particular product is a 14% ice cream mix. And uh, this is more than likely how you're going to receive your base mix product. Now it'll come in refrigerated uh, and you have the ability to be able to either use it there depending on the UHT or the HTST rating which is your pasteurization techniques. You might have anywhere between 20 to 30 days for a fresh mix or 60 to 90 days for a UHT or ultra high temperature pasteurized mix. Now both of them still need refrigeration, just because you've got a UHT mix doesn't mean to say that it can be left on a shelf. That's an aseptic mix, completely different thing. I want to talk to you today about this particular bag, because this bag is a double poly-walled bag that basically will not break. If you drop this bag on the ground, the cap will pop off before uh, before the bag will split. So it's a nice strong bag. There are a couple of ways that you should handle this bag. Uh, And there's a couple of ways you can hold the bag. And uh, I wanna talk to you about three, which are the most popular, two of which are terrible. So the first one is the Rock the Baby. So this is the Rock the Baby stance. You'll get your employees, your 15, 16, 17 year old kids walking around the store, cradling it like a baby. I'm just careful not to touch this mic here. And so unfortunately, (laughs) I love mix. I love ice cream mix. Truly, I say many times, when that ice cream first comes out of the machine, it's like a baby being born. So pure and innocent and lovely. But if you hold the bag like this, what often happens is the baby shifts weight and rolls out of your arms and hits the floor. Not the real baby, the bag of mix here. So you don't want to have your employees walking around the store holding a bag like a baby. Uh, The second, which is probably the most detrimental, is holding the mix from the top with the cap facing downward. So they're walking around the store, grabbing it out of the walk-in cooler, walking it over to the prep area over here. And sometimes if this cap isn't on correctly, that cap will either pop off, or if they're walking along and they catch it on the side of a prep table, it'll come off. And then unfortunately what happens is your employee says, boy, I feel I'm getting stronger. Really what's happening is the bag is getting lighter and you're spilling mix all over the floor, which is absolutely terrible. If you're gonna spill anything on the floor, please not let it be ice cream mix because it'll take 45 minutes to mop up. It's so viscous. The correct way to carry and to prepare a bag of mix is to hold it like a turkey. One hand, it's pretty heavy, one hand around its neck, so the cap there, one hand around there, and then one hand up its clacker. That way, I've got a good solid two-point hold on this bag. I've got a, 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 my throttling the neck of the bag and I've got my hand actually in it and grabbed it so that I can walk it to the cooler, I can walk it back, I can um, pour it into a bucket, I can pour it into the hopper and I will never um, go through the process of either dropping it or spilling it because I've got two hands on there and really that's the best way to do it. I'm a little bit pooped because I'm <laughs> chucking this bag around. Another thing I'll tell you is that when you're pouring mix into a hopper of a gravity fed machine, I see this quite a lot too, never let go of the neck of the bag or the spout of that bag until the mix is all the way out. Because what you'll find happen 
is they've twisted the bag up the top, but they're still holding the cap. And when they feel that they're halfway through, they feel they can let go of the cap. But then if they've twisted the bag, the bag spins the other way. And now you've got a trail of ice cream or custard mix or soft serve mix all over the place. So hold it like a turkey. 